Hey guys, welcome to our weekly Friday video. Sometimes we do have a bonus video on Tuesday, but today we're taking a look at two processes that I find quite interesting. We have the AMD FX 4100 and the FX 4300. So AMD is actually getting sued because of the FX range of processes and we will find out later in the video what's going on here. I bought both of them from AliExpress and looking at these specifications, they seem like decent budget CPUs. But we will find out what they can do very soon together with some gameplay footage and we will compare them against other processors like the Phenom 2x4 and Intel's Core 2 Quad. So both CPUs are for Socket AM3 Plus and these processors are more modern compared to the Phenom 2 or Core 2 Quad. The FX 4100 is from 2011 and the FX 4300 is from 2012. Both support SSE 4.2 and also AES and AVX. These are processor extensions and more and more games require them to run. For example, games such as Assassin's Creed Odyssey or Apex Legends will not run on Phenom 2 or Core 2 processors because they do not support these extensions. But the AMD FX range of CPUs, they do support them, so all the latest and greatest games will at least run. Now, how well they will run is something we will find out very soon. Both CPUs appear to be quad-core processors, at least that's what is stated on the AMD website and also in the BIOS. However, the FX processors are indeed a little bit different. These quad-core processors are actually made up of two modules. Each module does contain two cores, but between these two cores, some of the resources are actually shared. Specifically, the floating point unit is shared between the two cores. So this means that on such a module, two threads are not going to run as fast compared to what you would get with two traditional cores. I clearly remember when AMD launched these CPUs and the marketing material as well as all the hardware reviews did mention these modules. I remember thinking that it will be just a matter of time until they will just call them cores and that's exactly what happened. So we can expect multi-threaded performance to be behind that of the older Phenom 2 and Core 2 processors but by how much? That's what we're going to find out. And we will also have a look at overclocking. Uh, can a higher frequency help these processors uh, match or catch the speed of the older Phenom 2, for example? Let's dig a little bit deeper into these specifications. Both CPUs are built on the 32 nanometer process and come with a decent clock speed as well as turbo core. So what is Turbo Core? It is similar to Intel's Turbo Boost dynamic overclocking. On these processors we get a boost of up to 200 megahertz, but in games that stress more than two threads, you will only see an improvement of 100 megahertz. So the FX 4100 with the bulldozer architecture has a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and in games will turbo to 3.7 gigahertz. Whereas the FX 4300 comes with the slightly more modern pile driver architecture. It has a base clock of 3.8 GHz and in games will boost up to 3.9 GHz. All the FX processors have an unlocked multiplier for easy overclocking and we will look at that later, but now let's take a closer look at the test system. We once again are using the Radeon RX 570. This is the AM3 Plus motherboard and this time, well, this is not a budget motherboard. It is actually my only AM3 Plus motherboard. It's got the 990FX chipset, supports Crossfire as well as SLI and has some really good VRM cooling for some overclocking. So yeah, a really nice motherboard. We have a 16 gigabyte RAM kit with 1600 megahertz and timings running at 999.24. I had to go into the BIOS and activate the XMP memory profile. And for cooling, we're using the 125 watt thermal solution from AMD. 
for storage we got a 240 and 500 gigabyte ssd and i'm using the same 600 watt power supply for all my benchmarks so that we can compare the power draw results we will look at overclocking and games very shortly but now let's have a look at some benchmarks here we've got Cinebench R15. So the blue bar is a Core 2 Quad Q9650. The orange bar is the Phenom 2X4965. And then we've got our two FX processors. And we can see despite the higher clock speed, both of the FX processors are unfortunately slower than the older Phenom 2 or Core 2 Quad. We can see a similar picture in the 3 d Mark benchmarks the fx processors in most of the tests are lagging behind the older phantom 2 and core 2 quad however in skydiver the fx 4300 is able to outperform both the phantom 2 and core 2 quad so if back in the day you upgraded from a phantom 2x4 to such a fx quad core processor i think you would have likely been disappointed now, back then, I believe the support for SSE 4.2 likely wasn't that important, but now in 2019, this turns out to matter quite a bit, with more and more games requiring it. So let's have a look at overclocking. I did raise the voltage a little bit. Under load, we're getting 1.39 volts. At 4.8 gigahertz, the machine would blue screen when trying to load Windows. At 4.7 gigahertz, Cinebench would crash. But at 4.6 gigahertz, it passed everything. I played a few rounds of Apex Legends and had no crashes or other issues. Here we've got the 3D mark results and yeah, we can definitely see an improvement at 4.6 gigahertz. The FX 4300 is now more competitive, especially in Skydiver, it takes the lead. In Firestrike and in Cloudgate, unfortunately, it is still behind the Phenom 2 and the older uh, Core 2 quad processors. And here we have a look at power consumption. So this is the entire system at the wall going into a power meter. Under idle, we can see quite an improvement. The more modern FX processors are more efficient with 69 and 65 watts. Under load, we can also see a nice improvement compared to the older Phantom 2 X4 processor. The 965, which runs at 3.6 gigahertz, pulls 171 watts. So the FX processors do save quite a bit of power. And now we're going to have a look at some gameplay. So all this footage is with the FX4300 with stock settings. I will put the name of the game and information about the settings down below in the video.
do what you have to do to keep everyone alive till I get there. So, a griffin this close to the village? Strange. My thoughts exactly. In the forest or the mountains, sure, but here? Near the main road. Maybe it's the war. Corpses everywhere, the stench of blood, burnt flesh. Drives monsters crazy sometimes. Μία μία πίπνουσα αναμένω σαν τον Νέκιν. Η μία ο πρεσβύτερο πέφτει άπαντα αφήνω. Protecting something. Six weeks. Still no salt leads on who's been the local Trinity cell. But I talked to some people in town and they're excited. There's a VIP coming to the Day of the Dead. Name's Dominguez. We should look into it. So guys, what do I think of the AMD FX 4100 and 4300? Well, the main highlight is that these CPUs support the latest CPU instructions. This means that modern games will work fine on this processor. Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Apex Legends are good games to test. They will not work on a Phenom 2 or Core 2, for example. Now, the performance was a little bit disappointing. In multi-threaded tasks, it is clearly lagging behind the older Phantom 2 and Core 2. They are clearly faster. And this is despite the higher clock speed. The FX 4300 needs to be clocked much higher to match the performance of the older Phantom 2 X4 965. Roughly, it needs to run at 4.6 GHz to compete with the X4 965, running at only 3.6 GHz. Playing games, however, the FX 4300 does okay. While it's not the fastest processor, older games will run really well. And it will also do well with optimized games like Strange Brigade or Apex Legends. Assassin's Creed Odyssey turned out to be the most demanding game I tested. But even here we're getting around 30 FPS with medium details. The game pauses every now and then when riding through the game world, but I still think this is playable. So yeah, all games will at least run, but the performance is quite average and behind that of much older quad-core processors. Now we still have to talk about price and value. The CPUs aren't dirt cheap, but they are not expensive either with around $20 to $40. The real issue is the motherboard. You need an AM3 Plus motherboard with support for the FX series CPUs. And looking on places such as AliExpress or eBay, they are not cheap and easy to find, especially if you want the 900 series chipset. Now there are cheaper AM3 Plus motherboards using the older 760 or 780 chipset, but I don't know if they are worth getting. Maybe you guys have experience with such boards, Please share it down below in the comments. 
Thankfully, DDR3 RAM is priced well. Around $80 will get you a 16 gigabyte RAM kit. If you add everything up, such a FX system has stiff competition with Socket 1155 and the faster Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge processors. Also, for around $40 to $50, you can get the FX6300 with three modules and six cores. And this processor might actually be the sweet spot for the FX platform. And we will definitely be checking out how this FX6300 compares in a future video. So yeah, just like the NVIDIA GeForce FX range, it seems the FX doesn't bring much luck. These quad-core processors are a bit of a mixed bag. It's nice to see that they will run all the latest and greatest games, but the performance isn't that great and it's not a cheap platform either. So the value of what you're getting for your money is just not that good. But what do you think about these FX 4100 and 4300 processors? Maybe you have made some personal experience and got a story to share. Also, what about the other FX processors? Anything of interest, please leave it down below in the comment section. And that's pretty much it. I will see you soon with our weekly Friday video, but keep an eye out for Tuesday. Sometimes there's a bonus video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Give the like and click on that notification bell. And I shall see you soon with another one.